uh, just to say good morning and to greet each other and have a time of fellowship. For those joining in uh, via our website, my apologies, I set the uh, resolution wrong, so you might just see half of me and half of uh, the screen. Uh, bear with us just for one more Sunday, and I'll get that glitch fixed starting next Sunday service. Uh, so my apologies again for those uh, who are joining via our website. We will get that fixed by next Sunday. Good morning, Sandy. Good morning, Pat. And good morning, Jan. Good morning, Mariette. Good morning, Dan. We're all the way from Dayton. Wonderful. Judy says it's wonderful to hear Julie play again. Good morning, Dory. I'd like to welcome everyone to our Sunday morning worship service. Uh, it is live, and it's been a while since we had a live worship service in this sanctuary. I'm just very grateful, and all praise be to God for allowing this to happen and giving us the means to do so. Uh, first off, I would like to say uh, that this live uh, broadcasting and worship uh, was Really, everything got into place last minute. Literally, on Saturday night, we got everything into place. So I did not want to make an announcement beforehand uh, until I knew for certain that we would be able to have uh, this online worship service. So my apologies for the late uh, announcement that was made. Uh, and we did not give prior notice. So just in case you feel like the church didn't give out any information in advance, uh, it's because it we didn't, uh, just because we needed to uh, get everything settled. Uh, starting next Sunday, I would like to reiterate again uh, that there's many ways that you can give a Sunday worship service to God. Uh, one of the ways is joining via Facebook Live, just as many of you are doing. Uh, I do, I'm kind of looking at uh, the Facebook page on, our, uh, on, the, on my laptop. And it's wonderful to see the names. I'm horrible with names, so it's really good that I am able to see your names. And uh, just leave a comment uh, later on after the service. I would, I generally, after you leave a comment, I'd like to just sort of, uh, you know, visit your Facebook page. I'm not going to 
peruse through or anything, but just to know who you are uh, so I can have a good uh, mental image of your faces because uh, that's why I'm here. I'm here to serve you uh, so that you can your walk with Christ can be enhanced. Also, another way to join is via our website. My apologies for those who are joining via our website. Uh, I uh, didn't put the code in right, so a little bit of the screen is cut. Uh, we will get that fixed uh, once I could figure out the parameters again. So starting next Sunday, it would be much smoother. Uh, for those who are joining uh, via YouTube, uh, we will have to record this actual service and we would have to upload it later. So we'll probably have the YouTube messages uploaded at 1 p.m. on Sundays. And also, another way to join is uh, through... Uh, our drive-in service at the parking lot. This live worship service is being broadcasted on AM 1700. So when you come into our church parking lot, uh, you can come into AM uh, and tune into AM 1700. Uh, because AM signals are weak, uh, it only works at our church parking lot. So if you are at your home, you will not pick up anything. So keep in mind, you must be present at our church parking lot. Uh, and Please get the word out to people. This is one thing that I ask. Uh, a lot of people who need the drive-in service are people who don't have internet access or who do not feel comfortable using technology. As a church, as brothers and sisters in Christ, I think it's important and pertinent to invite uh, those people so that we be able to worship together. So that would be it for our announcements. Sorry for the longer announcements uh, because... I guess this is just our first Sunday. And if there are mistakes or little glitches here and there, please let me know. But also, uh, because this is sort of a beta testing uh, kind of phase, uh, your patience will be much appreciated. Now let us start our worship service with our beginning hymn from our United Methodist Hymnals, number 64. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty.
join in our call to worship. Our call to worship comes from Psalm 119. Your word is a lamp for my feet. A light on my path. I have taken an oath and confirmed it. That I will follow your righteous laws. I have suffered much. Preserve my life, Lord, according to your word. Accept, Lord, the willing praise of my mouth. And teach me your laws. Though I constantly take my life in my hands. I will not forget your law. The wicked have set a snare for me. But I have not strayed from your precepts. Your statutes are my heritage forever. They are the joy of my heart. My heart is set on keeping your decrees. To the very end. Amen. Now let us take this time to give up our offering uh, to our Lord. As you may know, there are many ways uh, to offer. So if you can go on to our website uh, and backslash giving, uh, you'll be able to see those options. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here. Gracious and loving and patient God. Lord God, we lament that we cannot be present here together. That, Lord God, because we live in a fallen world, that we have to suffer. But, Lord God, we also know that all good things come from you as well the very roofs over our heads, the very fact that we can have a worship service is because you are good. So may we remember your goodness. And Lord God, with this offering that we give, may we be reminded that you are our God. Lord God, bless us in this time, in this worship service. And may the spirit move and touch our hearts. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Today's scripture reading comes from Paul's letter to the Ephesian church. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 17b to 19. It's Ephesians chapter 3, verses 17 to 19. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have the power, together with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide, and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So, you know, as a kid, there was an unbelievable change in our landscape, in our backyard battles with our neighborhood kids. And what that was, was somewhere in the early 90s, this great invention, well, I'd read about this, and this great invention was actually stumbled upon sort of accidentally, and the super soaker was invented. See, the super soaker, I don't know, many of you probably bought your children uh, this super soaker, or many of you really wanted to have this super soaker. But anyway, it was all the rage in our neighborhood because, you know, back in the day before the super soaker, right, it'd be one of those, 
you'd have to press on the trigger and you'd get blisters and you'd get cramps on your hands and it was just not a pleasant experience to have water gun fights and backyard battles in our neighborhood. But once the super soaker came out, people started dominating. So as a kid, I wanted to get that super soaker really badly. That was the only thing on my mind is like, I want that super soaker. So, you know, luckily, as uh, my childhood church was actually right next to a Toys R Us. So uh, right after church, I would beg my parents to go to Toys R Us and say, you don't have to buy me anything. Just going there was so much fun. So I'd go to Toys R Us and I'd stay in front and stand in front of that super soaker. And I was like, and, you know, I, I just wanted to tell my parents that I really, really wanted this. Well, my birthday came along. My birthday is July 1st. It was actually the day I started here. But anyway, my uh, birthday came along, and I'm, you know, and when it was coming along, my father asked me, so, what's that water gun you were talking about? And I was like, oh, super soaker, Dad, super soaker. So I knew uh, when I had that big kind of box uh, on the table on my birthday, I knew that that was a super soaker. So with excited an excited heart, and I knew, you know, I was going to call all my friends up. Well, I was actually, you know, back in the day, right, we'd just go around the neighborhood and knock on our doors so we couldn't have a water gun fight. And I'd go and I'd open up the gift, and it wasn't what I expected. You see, the Super Soaker models that my friends had were the Super Soaker 50 or the Super Soaker 100. But what my parents got me was the Super Soaker 200. So in my mind, because my view of what a super soaker, what the dominant water gun should be like, was the 50 and 100. And as a kid, you don't know what 50 or 100 means, right? You just kind of want the things that your friends have. So I ended up with the super soaker 200. I was devastated. I wanted to cry. Now, you might be thinking it's funny, but I think if you have children or around children, you know, right? Even if you give them the better things, they just, there's this particular thing that they want. So I was absolutely devastated that I got a Super Soaker 200. I didn't get that Super Soaker 50 or the Super Soaker 100, which my rich friends had. I got the Super Soaker 200. But, you know, I still, you know, wanted to make my parents happy. So I reluctantly called my buddies up for, I don't remember the details. I was so devastated, I didn't want to go out at all. But my mom was like, hey, you got the water gun, go out and, you know, play with your friends. So I reluctantly went out with my Super Soaker 200. It was huge. I was fairly young then. It was a huge water gun. And I was afraid that my friends would make fun of me. It was just a bad situation. Anyway, I went out. And then... We started playing, and then I realized that I could shoot further. And when my friends had to go for the refill, I didn't have to go for the refill. I actually started dominating. And so what ended up happening, I think it's very similar to our situation now and actually our walk with God in many ways. I think it's really, really important for us to recognize how our Lord works. Because I think this situation right now is not an ideal situation for any of us. I do not think that we uh, really want to be in this type of situation. But just as my parents bought me the best super soaker available, we believe that our Lord gives us what we need, the best things that we need, and that is the hope that we really have and keep in our hearts, is that not? Paul writes this letter in Ephesians to the Ephesian church. And the Ephesian church, although it was a pretty wealthy church, I'm assuming had a lot of problems that had come with wealth. You see, Ephesus back in the day was the cultural and economic epicenter of that area. And I'm sure once the people in the Ephesian church, they were, they were really burning with the passion that the Holy Spirit gave them. They were trying to make a church and give God worship. 
there were a lot of stumbling blocks. Maybe what they had pictured uh, in their minds of what a church or a community or what a household ought to be, a household the Lord ought to be, maybe those things were just not happening in the way that they expected it to be. But Paul is saying in his prayer for the Ephesian church, he is saying that he kneels before the Father, this is verse 14, from where every family in heaven and earth derives its name, I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his Spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. That is the gift that God gives. Sometimes when we receive that gift, we don't know what it is. We don't quite recognize what it is, just as I didn't quite recognize what my super soaker was. I had never used it before. It was something so great, so grand, yet because I was expecting one thing and I didn't get that, I was devastated. And I think that happens a lot in church. We expect one thing from a church. This whole COVID situation comes in. We expect that the church do this and do this. Or we expect from ourselves that we would be able to do this and this. But it, in reality, it becomes very difficult sometimes when we have this realization that the gift that God gave us is sometimes something that we do not want. But Paul goes on to say, and I pray that you, being rooted, rooted and established in love, that is the gift that God gives, may have the power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. To do immeasurably more. This situation may not be ideal. I prayed many prayers of lament to God. The transition during the COVID period, having to sell a house and buy a house in this period, was not ideal. I lamented, I asked God, why are you making me go through this? Why is this a Sunday worship? This is my first Sunday worship service, and it is minus the few people that are here to help out with the worship service. There are just empty seats. All I see in a monitor on there is just a picture of myself. And there, it's really easy to lament. But we have to believe that there is a great love, a great hope that our God gave us as a gift. And I encourage us, even during these times, that when we use the gift of love that God gave us, we will experience something that is beyond our imagination. You know, it wasn't until I had the super soaker and I actually used it. I made the best out of the situation. And what I realized was I could shoot longer. I could shoot further. I could shoot higher. And in this situation, Paul says to the Ephesian church, and I think this is what Paul says to us. And this, this verse is my favorite verse in all of Scripture. This is what I go by in ministry, that we will be able to see how wide, how long, and high, and deep is the love of Christ. This may seem like a crappy situation, and in a lot of times it is. But I think it's through these moments, together as a church, we can see and experience the love of Christ even more. So let's have hope, brothers and sisters in Christ. Let's have hope of the wonderful love that our Lord gives. And let us work together so that we will be able to experience something that is beyond our imagination, just as Paul was praying for the Ephesian church. Let us pray. Dear gracious God, thank you. Thank you for the gift of love. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. 
that even though the world among, uh, around us may be crumbling, we have a hope in you. And Lord God, we humbly pray at this time. We humbly pray that we be able to experience your love in ways we did not think possible because that is what you have promised. So Lord God, give us hope. Give us faith. And heal our hearts at this time. And may we continue on in our journey and walk with you. Pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Sing the song.